So what foods do I eat? What foods do I not eat? So that's what I'm going to be going over the day because I've been getting so many, so many, so many, so many, so many requests in regards to what foods I ate that, uh, that um, allowed me to also pass the fibroids along with taking the apple cider vinegar with the bacon soda. Um, so let's get right into it. healing um you gotta have your mind right so first and foremost i had to start thinking in a completely different way in regards to um the type of foods that i was going to be eating um the way i felt about myself the way i thought about food the way i thought about the food that i was eating and um just just the overall emotion that I had in regards to all of it. So all of that has to be taken into consideration because this is a holistic thing. You can't fix one thing without without fixing the other. You can't fix your food unless you fix the way you think about food. So that was my journey. And I initially started posting um, about my journey in 2011. It was on Facebook. Um, I was posting fibroids that was coming out of me and I was asking other women, well, are you having these issues? Are you doing this? And is this happening? And women was like, oh my gosh, I'm having this, these heavy flows like Niagara Fall and this, 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 and this, this. And so I started posting all this different food and stuff and different things that I was doing that was helping me because I was seeing really good results. And like many of you, um, when I went to the doctor, the doctor did tell me, my gynecologist, um, she was like, well, we're gonna have to do surgery and you'll know, more than likely use your, lose your uterus. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, wait, what? So that was definitely not an option for me. Um, I plan on leaving this world with all my body parts, including my teeth. And if I could hold on to every eyelash and everything else, I'll hold on to that too. <laughs> but, um, so, but yeah, surgery just, it was not an option um, that I was going to take, so I did not. Um, if you watch the video in regards to um, why I eat this way, my, my journey, and where I was talking about my mom, you already know that my mom, she was dealing with fibroids as well. She, she had um, um, bleeding fibroids. And the doctors, I don't, they couldn't seem to get her fibroids to stop. And so that was 2007, eight, um, because she passed in 2009. And so when she had finally let us know about what was going on and her bleeding with the fibroids and stuff, um, that was when I started looking into it. I was already doing some looking into um, 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 better health and everything, but we never really had like a really bad diet. Um, but I was already looking into better health because I was... I was on this search for information on B12 in regards to is B12 actually being absorbed and why is it not being absorbed and different things and so I started getting into seaweed and yeah this was like back then. So, so our mom let us know and then I really ramped up um, my research and study for her. So. I came across information in regards to turmeric, um, and so we, we experimented with the turmeric. I came across these um, acid and alkaline charts that were online, and like I said, this was back in 2007, 2008, and so I completely changed her diet up. Um, I removed like all the meat from her diet. She didn't want to give up all all meat so I was like okay I won't cause you pain in that way so 
she ate a little bit of fish um, like um, every once in a while. She liked fried fish, so it was like, okay, you gotta stop frying the fish because frying is just not good. So you gotta stop frying the fish. I got pushed back. I, I continue to get pushed back from my mom though. Um, but, um, you know, she, she did limit her intake of that. So I set up this um, kind of a meal plan for her so that she could eat more of the foods that were on the alkaline side of things and take in as minimum amounts of the, the acid foods. And if you do a research for alkaline acid foods, you'll see all these different charts. Um, I, they, they should still be out from 2007, 2008. They're probably updated now. Um, but yeah, so I put her on this, this meal plan. Um, she, she, she was fighting against this. She really was. We came across some information. Um, what was the Budwick diet? She tried that. She didn't like the blend, the flax seeds and stuff. She didn't like that stuff at all. She was just like, this shit, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. So it's like, okay. So, you know, so, but we, I was doing these little um, drinks and putting as little flax seed in it as possible. And I had to make um, whatever oils I was putting inside of it, I had to make sure that it was water soluble and that she wasn't really gonna be able to um, detect it and disguising it with fruits. And years later, I kind of found out these are called smoothies. Did not know, because we was doing this stuff then. Just trying to disguise um, a lot of different stuff, right? So, she, um, I was giving her these different smoothies. Um, and she, now with the turmeric, the turmeric did uh, really great things for her because I was giving her the turmeric in large amounts. Um, and so it would be like um, maybe about a tablespoon in like about a cup, half a cup of water or something like that. And it would be like a little bit of cayenne inside of it over some pepper because I was doing my research. Okay, so you have to have the pain along with this. And so I was like, okay, mom, so you got to do this. Da, 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 da. So she was taking that down and plus she was changing up the way she was eating. She was doing all of that. And she, she called me one day and she said, I don't know how to act now. And I was like, huh? She said, because I haven't been bleeding, so I don't know how to act. No, I'm like, wait, what? She was like, I have not been bleeding. The bleeding has stopped, so, you know, that's excitement. So it's like, okay, so we're going to keep this up. We're going to keep this up. So she, um, um, like a, a few days later, now she wore glasses. And so she called again. She said, you know, and this is not just in my head. And, I, and I'm hearing her in my voice, in my head. That's what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm like hearing her voice and feeling her energy as I'm saying this, right? So she says, she says, well, I can see better. My eyesight is better. So I was like, oh, okay. We gonna keep on this course. So continue to do the turmeric. Continue, continue, continue to do that. So she continued to do that. She continued to eat better and better and better and better. And then um, I think friends and, and some of her family, like her her sisters and whatever, started getting in her head because she started talking to them more. And she hadn't talked to them in a while, but she started talking to them and then friends. And they started telling her about um, different things. And... Um, she went and so she, she, she was being more, started being concerned about like, um, I mean, cause she was, she was taking off the weight and she was feeling better. She was having more energy and she was just letting me know everything that was going on with her. Right. And so all of it was just absolutely great. And so she, um, um, she decided that she wanted to have surgery to have the fibroid removed. And it's like, you don't need to do that because you're getting results without, without all of that. 
But, so she decided to do that. Um, she decided to do that. So she went and had the surgery. They removed the fibroids and it turned out that they removed her ovaries as well. And from there, it was downhill. It was downhill from there. Um, so after she had the surgery is when they, when they said, oh, you have cancer and it's metastasized and all this. And it's like, oh, you gotta be kidding. So the cutting on her, um, it seemed as though, and this is just my thought, not a professional um, observation at all, but this is just from a layman, from a novice. It seemed like the fibroids were actually protecting her from cancer. It was housing the cancer and she was getting rid of everything in a natural way. And so when she allowed them to cut on her, it's when the problems started happening and it was pretty rapid. It was pretty rapid and it was like, I don't know how to deal with this right here. I mean, because staying this course is, it's not doing it. Although we alkaline her diet and all those great benefits that she was having, it's just like that surgery just undid everything. Her entire, entire in, internal environment was changed just because of that surgery because she was cut on, you know. So, and then, um, so it, it just progressed and progressed and then she passed in 2009. But she got a lot off her chest before she passed. Um, and when I say she got a lot off her chest, she got a lot off of her chest in regards to anything that was bothering her, you know, and that was a really good thing, you know, and we encouraged it, you know, mom, you got anything that you need to say? She had no harsh words for us, but she did for the people that was around her. And that's a good thing to relieve all of, to relieve yourself of all of that before you, before you leave here, have a good death, you know? And all while she was inside of the hospital, I mean, you know, the hospital, they don't want you to bring in extra food and all this type of stuff, but you know, still, in the hospital, basically, they're just, it was just like, um, they just want to maintain um, her until she passed. That's the hospital. And so, you know, she's being pumped with all this medication and stuff. So, excuse me, I just ate something. But she, but what we were doing was bringing her in herbal teas, you know, dandelion root, um, um, and it was fresh dandelions picked from picked from outside. So we bring all that in and, and just, and, but her family, her, whoo, they were around and they made things really hard because there was like this, this sort of ignorance into being healthy and, and health food and stuff. And they just caused a whole bunch of problems. And it was, it was a stressful thing for her. So it was like, okay, we got to keep these, these people out of here. You know, but you know, she wanted them around, but they had such negative energy and everybody could feel it. The woman in the, in the, in the next room and then they felt it and it was like, what is going on? It was like, those people, <laughs> but I digress because I am going into something that maybe I shouldn't be, but whatever. Um, but she passed, she passed and she got a lot off her chest. Um, so, you know, you know, that was that. But, and all during her, um, her bout um, with that cancer and with the fibroids and everything, I continued to say, I'm gonna take this away from you. I'm gonna take this away from you. I'm gonna take this away from you. And what it did, because I was focusing on that so much, and I mentioned this inside of one of my other videos, I focused on taking that from her so much till I actually did and and I ended up with five boys and and I talked to my um my family doctor not the gynecologist but my, my family doctor and she was the one that that pretty much pointed it out to me in regards to how I just took it in so deep till it really affected me. The emotions of it all affected me and it changed me up. 
And so when she pointed that out, and, and when I went to the hospital, the reason I went to the hospital was because I, I was like feeling, feeling really, really um, tired. Um, I wasn't really focusing on on my health, and then you know, my mom just died, and actually, my dad had um, passed away as well. He passed of pancreatic cancer, and and that was like a year and a half after our mom had passed, and so you know, so that was that was just a whole lot that was going on around then, and I was taking it all in, and I'm I'm not the type of person that really expresses my emotions at least I wasn't but now you know I get everything I don't hold on to stuff like I used to anymore I just don't I don't hold on to anyone's emotions and I don't take anyone's emotions in to myself to cause myself danger um I don't I don't like to or I don't really care to um 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 focus on things of the past that would have what that wouldn't have been um like uh, um what i want to say um that wouldn't have been um um for the for, for the betterment of my health my mental health or anything like that so i tend to just i mean i work I, basically is i worked a lot of my issues out too and a lot of, a lot of the issues that had to do with what was going on with my mom, you know, all that had to be worked out. And like I mentioned, I had to work out the way that I viewed food, I viewed myself. And so I had to change up like everything, my, my internal environment, my physical environment, people that, that I was around, just change up the entire energy. And as we were growing up, our, our father would have us meditating. He didn't call it meditating. He would just have us sitting down, cross our legs, be quiet, just breathe and just sit still. And, shh. and so we did. But, you know, eyeballs wandering like. But, you know, that was something he would often have us doing, especially when our energy just got like so high and so rambunctious because we ran around, right? And so that was just a thing to calm us down. And so the reason I bring that up is because I got back into um, meditating. And so I continued doing my my research, and um, and I learned about Dr. Layla Africa. And so I got his book, and the information that he shared inside of his book was was astounding. I love the information that he shared inside of his book because he was talking about um, food combinations, also the acid and alkaline foods. He was talking about um, our different energy centers and everything. And so I'm, I'm learning more and more about this. And then as I'm learning more and more about this and putting these titles to it, like root, solar, sacral, all that, I'm like, okay, our dad knew about this stuff but he wasn't saying root chakra none of that he was just he talked about various things and he talked about things in a, in a certain way and he do things um or have us doing things in a particular way that had to do in regards to these energy centers so i'm learning more and i'm learning more and i'm learning more um and i'm doing all of these things um that i had research in regards to getting rid of fibroids and um, becoming more alkaline and just being more healthier and livelier and just getting my energy together and getting my mind right, right? And I'm telling you, so I started, um, I was looking at these videos that Dr. Layla Africa was putting out and I was like, this man, this man got it going on. Then from, from Dr. Layla Africa, it's where I learned about um, um, Dr. Um, um, Hulcrum. And, oh my gosh, it was just, 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 the black community was coming out in force. And I was just like, gosh, I didn't know this existed. 
So I'm learning all this information from Dr. Jewel Pulchrum, Dr. Layla Africa, and, and so I'm really getting myself together and I'm meditating and I'm learning about these different energy centers and just really pulling myself together. And so, and the more and more I got into um, that information, the more and more information started to come at me. And I started feeling more and more my relatives energy. And I was like, oh, that's what that is. That's what this is. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking so much. <coughs> my throat is getting dry. So I'm about to get some water. I'm about to put this on pause. Okay. Okay. I'm back. So <laughs> I, okay. So I, I didn't get water. Well, it's water in it, but I drink a lot of um, water with chlorella in it. Um, I also use spirulina, and I'll put like some lime in it, and I'll put some some cayenne, some really hot cayenne pepper inside of it, and this is what I drink. This is one of my green drinks. Um, sometimes. I may put a little bit of um, honey in it if I don't have any. Um, I don't. Not, I don't like the way the agave tastes inside of it. If I don't have any date syrup, I might put some date syrup. Well, if I don't have date syrup, I'll put a little bit of honey inside of it. But this one here, it just doesn't have anything. I don't too much deal with um, sweet, sweet foods and sweeteners, or whatever. So I take this to the head. Yeah, so that's just some chlorella, spirulina, um, and some lime juice, and some cayenne. That's all that is, it's the liquid cayenne. So that's what I drink, and I drink like several of these a day, and I make it very strong. I'll put like um, about four tablespoons of chlorella and spirulina inside of this jar and then I'll put like about a quarter cup of the lime juice inside of here and the rest of it is just water. Shake it up, drink it down and I drink it like several times a day. Several times a day. Okay. Um, so in regards to what I am not eating, I left all meat alone and I know that's a hard Thing for some people but when we were growing up we didn't always eat meat we didn't we didn't have it like every meal we didn't so and so it, was, it, it wasn't like a very difficult thing for me to turn it loose so I turned me to loose um, I turned it loose all in, including fish nothing from the sea all that was ne was never crazy about um, Never had lobster before, so you don't have to worry about that. Wasn't a very big shrimp fan. Um, our mother would make shrimp, but we never went out our way to go and buy shrimp or anything like that. So it just wasn't a thing. None of that. Never went to Red Lobster. None of that type of stuff. But um, but yes, yeah, so you got eat none of that. Um, I had gotten into. Um, um, like those those mock meats and then when I learned about soy I left all that alone because it turned out that the soy was actually feeding the fibroid because it brings more estrogen into your body so excuse me so I had to leave that alone so nothing that had to do with soy no soy milk left all that just left it all alone um no white rice but we we didn't eat white rice anyway we, we ate brown rice um that was the preferred of the family our our father's side of the family were um part of the nation of islam so they didn't do white rice anyway so we were doing brown rice but i i, I was doing a little bit of rice and then i for said i just left that alone and instead of doing the rice, I, I picked up and was eating like um, 
Fongyo, my sister was cooking quinoa. I wasn't cooking quinoa, but I was doing the Fongyo and I liked the way she was making the, the, um, the quinoa. And then I gradually started doing quinoa dishes, but she, she was like the bomb with the quinoa. Um, and I was the bomb with the Fongyo. So then we swapped up. And so now I do quinoa and Fongyo and she does Fongyo and quinoa. And so those that was the substitute for the rice. And if you like, if you like Kush Kush, because I was eating Kush Kush too, but had to leave that alone. It's too starchy. So, but if you like Kush Kush, you can use um, the the Fonio in its place. It's really good and it's real easy to fix. And I have several um, videos in regards to making um, making Fonio. Um, also inside of both of my cookbooks, I have recipes for it as well. Um, I, what else did I leave alone? Oh, all dairy. I left all dairy alone. Dairy, all of it. Fed into the fibroid. Estrogen. Like I said, anything that fed into the fibroid that caused estrogen to spike, I left it all alone. All of it. Left alone. So that was meat. That was also fish. That was dairy. That was soy. That was, um, well, didn't eat white bread anyway, but I was doing wheat bread. So I left all that alone. So I, um, my mom, she was, she was already making bread. So started really, really making my own bread. The only flours that I use is kamut flour, spelt flour, and chickpea flour. Those are the only three flours that I use. Um, and chickpea flour is very, very versatile because you can do so much with chickpea flour. Chickpea flour, oh my gosh. So many recipes come to mind when I think about what I can do with just chickpea and chickpea flour alone. Um, gosh, you can make omelets with chickpeas. You can make um, mock eggs with it, make various desserts with it. Um, oh, I make um, like different types of mock meats with it. I mean, just so much comes to mind when I start thinking about chickpea. Then there are different types of chickpea. So there's the regular chickpea that you see at the side of the store, the yellow chickpea. Then there's the green chickpea. Love that. And then there's the black chickpea. Um, so these chickpeas are just off the hook. So definitely invest into chickpea. And if you're concerned in regards to how you're going to get your protein because you're cutting out all this meat and all this other stuff, Chickpea is a great alternative for for that protein, um, as well as um, eating a lot of green foods. So I'm surprised I'm just not green. Like really, you don't really see a serious olive tone in my skin. You probably do see an olive tone because that's how much green food I actually eat. So I'm not just drinking it this way. I eat a whole bunch of green food. Um, I eat um, whew, veg. I I'm just a, a, a veggie holic. Like really, I'm a, I'm a veggie holic. I eat a lot of um, seaweeds. Um, I got into eating seaweed um, back in 2007, 2008, 2009. Um, and I have various types of seaweed that I use. So the number one is our nori sheets. So I love nori sheets. And nori sheets, I just eat these raw. Like you see the perforation, the perforated marks, I'll fold that over and then I just break those down and break them into little square pieces and I just eat those. Um, they, they're really nice. Um, there are also some the nori snacks that you can find in the stores that may have like sea salt on them, a little olive oil. I like those too, but I don't like to eat them like too much because um, I don't want to take in too much additional salt because seaweed nori, seaweed period has its own um, salt. And so add that additional salt, I, it's not something that I prefer <laughs> to do. <laughs> so. But I do eat the nori snacks and sometimes um, eating nori sheets, a little bit of nori snacks and then a salad. 
that's breakfast for me. That's probably even dinner for me. And then I have my little drink or maybe I'm going to have a smoothie. Um, the other seaweeds that have, I have so many, um, also do the, um, the dose. Not the dose, but the, um, well, dose too. The combo, but I don't have any, um, dose left. But I do have some combo sheets. So, this is combo. And I'll, you, I wash, I wash my combo because you see that little, you see that right there? That's the little sea urchin that's stuck on it. So, I'll wash my, I wash it off because, you know, you might have a little bit of sand. You might have these little sea urchins. You might have some shells stuck on it. So, I wash off. You have to clean off the sheets. So, I clean the sheets off. And some of you might go, oh, but what about that, the, um, that little umami taste that you get from, from the, from the, um, from the combo? Well, you know, that little white powder. Well, here's a good thing. It's not just on top of it. That's just on it because it dried. Those are some of the sugars that dried. It's all the way through the kombu. So, and if you let this sit up after you've cleaned it, if you decide to just let it sit up again, you can build that back up on it and continue to use it. But I use this, and this is basically what I use for for broth. So that's the combo. So when you hear daishi kombu, this kombu. And then I have the um, I use wakame. So you might be familiar with like the wakame flakes. I'm like completely out of um, the flakes for now, anyway. But I also use um, what's called alaria. And alaria, um, it's it's a, um, a, a a slightly better quality than the flakes that you that you would um, typically get on the market. It's a bit um, more um, um, it's more flexible. It's it's it has a softer texture. It's just a nice chew, and it has a very nice taste to it. Um, it's very supple. And this is a whole leaf um, alaria. This is a wakami, but it's whole leaf alaria. Um, and so you have to wash this as well. So you soak it. I, the way I do it, I'll soak it in water um, just to, to clean it off because although it'll come to me clean, as clean as the people that send it to me get it clean. There are still going to be a, a few shells probably on it, um, little sea snails and probably a little bit of sand because it's coming right up out of the Pacific Ocean. So I'll soak it like three times in the water just to get all that out. And then you have this nice size um, leaf. And the leaf, I use that for different things. So I'll either cut it up, use it in salad, um, I may soak the leaf um, in like um, some ginger, cayenne, various different um, herbs just because it'll take on those different flavors and then I'll use it as a wrap. But you'll notice if you if you get the whole leaf and maybe I'll put a picture of it inside of this video. Although I did make a video and it's called Under the Sea where I show the whole leaf. So take a look at that and maybe I'll spot it inside of this video. I probably have like the link up there. Somewhere it might be up there, it's on one of these sides, but it's a whole leaf, and you know how leaves have the rib going right down the middle. So, the whole leaf, Alaria Wakame, is going to have that as well. And the leaves are huge enough to where all you need is the side because the rib of it is going to it's it's too thick, um, to actually true, it's very dense. So, just cut down one side of it, and I use it as a wrap. So I make various wraps from the wakami leaf and I'll stuff it with various vegetables and I also take into, you know, I eat um, mushrooms every now and then but not a whole lot. And when I have mushrooms, I definitely have to have 
um, some seaweed along with it because mushrooms are very high in ammonia. And although mushrooms register as being alkaline, it's just that it's so high because it's, it's really acidic, but it registers so high in ammonia. And if you know what ammonia does, well, ammonia um, will cause various um, um, health, health issues. So eat some seaweed if you're gonna be be messing around with mushrooms just to to rid yourself of the ammonia um, seaweed is really good for that the other seaweed that I've taken up taken up to eating um, is some um, um, sea moss I used to get like sea moss from like the health store like the powdered sea moss from the health store and then in 2015 is when I learned about Dr. Sabi and how Dr. Sabi was was showing people how they could heal themselves from pretty much anything that I learned about this case that he beat and because you know the word was out how he was healing people from, from cancer from AIDS from da 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 all this stuff and so he there was this big case that he won so you know I was like wow who is this man so I'm looking more and more into him and he has this list that he put together in regards to alkaline foods and it's something that, that's most beneficial for the African biological um, makeup. And I was just like, oh, wait, okay, wait a minute. What's this all about? So 2015, I'm really looking into him now. And it's like, okay, so this man has done a lot of stuff over in Honduras and then he had an office in New York and everything. But he has this list and the list is very strict. So the list, what it does, it eliminates a lot of the hybrid foods and it puts in, um, it offers you, it recommend, well, it's a recommendation of some of the best foods to eat. Um, and as you should know, anything that benefits the African body, it benefits everyone else so this list is something that you might want to take a look into because I mean it's, it's pretty awesome what he put together it's very restrictive too so um I stick to it as much as I possibly can but I don't really want to um excuse me my, my eyes I don't really care to restrict myself so much in eating, but all the foods on that list, I eat all those foods on that list. And I may deviate, and the way I'll deviate, like like um, jackfruit is something that's not on the list. So I'll, I may have that every once in a while. Um, and then like maybe lemons are not on the list, but limes are. But I'll use lemons every now and then. Um, then you know, it's so it's like small things like that um, that I'll that I'll um, take in and and use for myself. Um, but but yeah, so look into Doctor Sabi. Um, his website is Doc. Well, he's passed now, but the website is Doctor Sabi Cell Food. And you can download the PDF file. I also put the information inside of my cookbook too. So you have the list of, of the recommended foods that's updated to, to, to 2020. That's inside of, of, um, inside of my book. It's inside of the back of the book. So yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I learned about Dr. Sabi and his food recommendations. Um, oh, and beets is not on there. Beets. Um, I'll have blue beets like every blue moon and when I say I have it it's really just to put like maybe about a, um, a quarter of a beet inside of a smoothie other than that I don't sit and just like eat beets um, because I'm, I'm getting my I'm, a lot of people might eat beets because of um, the iron intake from the beets but because of the food combinations that I eat with the seaweed, with 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 everything else that I'm doing, 
and basically my internal environment is pretty clean so I get the most um, um, out the nutrition from my food because I'm eating very clean um, so oh and one other one of the seaweed is the conscious crispus. So conscious crispus is one of the seaweeds that Dr. Sabi, which is sea moss. That's the seaweed that Dr. Sabi made very, very popular as well. And I get that also in whole leaf. When it comes in whole leaf, it'll be dry. And I'll put up a, I'll put up a photo. Well, hold on. Hold on. I have some inside the refrigerator. I'm going to pause this. Okay, so I just got my little bowl out. So I have some soaking here. The whole leaf conscious crispus is soaking inside of some water and I just keep it inside of the water. Um, not blended up or anything because I use it in salads. But this, let me just pull out one of the leaves instead of like a, this, the big bunch. But this is this is conscious crispus. That's conscious crispus. Okay, that's conscious crispus. That's the seaweed that um, Dr. Sabi is really using. Now you may see the other seaweed that looks like rhizomes. I don't have any more of that, but that's what I use when I make my um, when I make my um, um, my mock cheese. I use the other seaweed that looks like rhizome. It's called Gracilaria, and it you get that from um, from like the islands, the warm waters, like over in Honduras. Um, just be careful because there is some fake product put out. Well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's out on the market. You just want to be careful when you start choosing this stuff because some of it is like clean with bleach or whatever. So just be careful of your sourcing. But, so this is Conscious Crispus. The other is Brasilaria. And that one is the, it's the, the, yeah, I don't have any of that. But it's like the rhizome. Um, if, I'll, I'll try, maybe I'll put a picture of it inside this video as well. Um, but yeah, that's the one that you can get this really, really dense um, gel from. Um, when you blend it all together so you soak it and it's gonna you'll start seeing that it's getting a little slimy um those are just the sugars being released from it and then the longer you let it sit the more it starts to break down and then you blend it all together or you boil it whatever whichever one that you want to do but all of this all of these seaweeds are very high um it's a good source of iodine and if you want to lower the iodine content inside of it, you cook it. That will uh, remove some of the iodine. Um, so those are some of the seaweeds that I eat. There are so many more seaweeds. I mean, I have just like, I go from A to Z with the seaweeds. So I have a lot, but that's some of the, the greenery that I eat. Um, I eat a lot of fruits. Um, if you look up the the list, um, go to Dr. Sadie Cell Food and download his PDF file and you'll see the list of foods that I'm talking about. Um, but definitely in regards to healing, you have to clean up your diet. You definitely have to clean up your diet. I mean, I eat maybe once a day, but I, I, I tend to snack a lot and when I'm snacking, I'm going to be eating on some nori sheets. Uh, I'm going to be snacking on a small salad. Um, some nuts, some berries, um, some fruits. So I'll do like some small snacking. Um, and then like a meal for me would be like... Um, I might have some chickpeas cooked in some type of way. Um, it might be a chickpea dish, it might be a chickpea curry. And then I might have like a salad with it. And then afterwards I might drink down some type of a nice hot tea. Um, but before it all, I might drink down some water 
or might have something like this before I eat my dinner. Um, so those are the foods that I'm eating and that's what I'm, what I'm not eating. And in regards to doing the apple cider vinegar with the baking, with the aluminum free baking soda, um, that's three times a day. And so I was asked the question, do you drink a lot of, should you be drinking a lot of water when you're, um, when you're, when you're drinking that? My response is you should be drinking a lot of water all of the time, whether you're doing a certain protocol or not, you should always be drinking a lot of water because it helps to flush your body out. So, and you definitely want to stay regular, especially if, if you're, you're in some sort of um, detoxification because there's going to be, there can be a lot of fallout. And if you're not drinking a lot of water to flush all this stuff out, then it's going to build up in your, your, your liver, your kidneys, you're going to cause yourself some problems. So drink a whole bunch of water. Um, I drink more water than, than I used to. Basically because this is a new world, things are changing, um, there's more um, radiation in the world from more technology coming down, so, and it, it's very drying to your skin because what it does is sucks up water. So, I drink much more water now. I want to keep my healthy glow about me, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, Let's see something else. Oh, well, back into taking the apple cider vinegar and the, um, the aluminum free baking soda. So three times a day, I would take it in the morning. I would take it in the noon. I would do it like before, sometime before I went to bed. If you find that it's too strong for you, then stop, stop using it. And if you don't want to stop using it, then put more water inside of it, okay? So make this work, make it work for you. I mean, I made it work for me. And and just keep in mind, it's not just what you're going to be eating. Because like I said, this is a mental thing too. Because I was also, man, fibroids can make you just feel kind of angry sometimes. You just be like, Gosh, I hate this. Oh my gosh, you just, just this, this anger, this sadness, and you just, just, just frustrated because of it. So, and, and you find, and you're thinking, well, you're feeling that way about the fibroid, but the fibroid is in you and it's, it's become a part of you. So really, that's you, that's you feeling that way about yourself. And that was what, I had to realize about myself. So I had to come up out of that thinking, really come up out of that thinking. Um, so that's also where the meditation um, came into play. So I meditate a lot. I wake up, meditate. I might meditate for like two hours, three hours at a time these days. And then, you know, you meditate before you even go to sleep. I never wake up and turn on the news. I don't even turn on my TV unless I'm streaming something from my computer, a movie or a series that I downloaded that I want to watch. I don't even know what the news is unless I go on one of these social networking platforms to see all this information going up and down the, th the thread and stuff or something like that. Other than that, I tend to keep all of that um, negative energy out of my space and I handle negative energy so much better <laughs> now especially since meditating and and just clearing my mind and just getting my mental space together um, but definitely drink a lot of water um, I don't drink milk so you might say well if I'm gonna have to leave milk alone what am I gonna doing this place well the great thing is you have some choices so we call these nut milks although it's not milk it's more like a juice because but you you can you can um blend a coconut um the meat from the coconut and make a coconut milk 
really a juice, but call it milk. For this purpose, I'm gonna call it milk. Okay, so there's coconut milk, there's um, hemp milk, yeah, hemp. Just get you some hemp seeds and blend it in. You just need some water, some hemp seeds, um, a little bit of sea salt. Um, if you want it to not be so watery, then that's where the Conscious Crispus comes into play. So, because when you blend up the Conscious Crispus, you're going to get this gel. Just letting it sit inside of the water, you're going to get a little bit of it coming off. But when you pour some hot water on that and you let it sit, and it's gonna it's gonna gel up even more. So you get even more coming off of it. And then you blend it down, and now you have this gel that you can use as a thickener. So you use it as in for substitutes uh, for uh, like gelatin, um, anything that you need a thickener for desserts. Yeah. So jello, I, I have a video out um, like like these um, no Noello shots that I came up with using. Well, it wasn't the conscious Christmas; it was the Blas the Graciaria that I was using. So yeah, so check that out. But it's an awesome alternative, and you also um, with the Graciaria. You can make, um, well, I came up with this way of using it to do like different things, like cheese, desserts, um, 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 what do you call them? So ginger chews. I have a video for making ginger chews with the Graciaria. So check that out. That one is awesome. Love it. I love making ginger chews with ginger. Okay. Um. Let's see something else that um that you guys have been asking about. Mm. Oh, okay. So, did I have any pain? No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, I eliminated having pain when I changed up my diet. When I eliminated the sugars, um, the salt, and added in the seaweed, and I eliminated the dairy and the meat, I didn't have, um, I, I eliminated having cramps, pains, anything. None of that anymore. So I haven't had cramps, pains, anything like that since back in 2000. And Eight, seven, something like that. Eight, nine, around there. It's been a long time. It's awesome, right? Mm -hmm -hmm. So, changed up my diet, actually eliminated. So, I was asked, have I been having any pains um, when I was um, dispelling the fibroids? No, no pains at all. All I noticed was the end, like, build big graphic. But all I noticed was I might um, um, wipe myself and there was one sitting right there. It's like, oh gosh, wow. Yeah. So I didn't even, I, I never felt it as they were coming out. All I know is, okay, there it is right there. Yeah. And I didn't have to be on my cycle for something to pass through my body okay so now something that you might want to know there may be a foul smell a foul smell because of the die-off and the there's a fluid and the fluid it, it could be clear or it could be yellow and there's there's this there's a smell that, that comes along with it. Just thinking about that brings that smell. If you, gosh, just know, yes, there, there is a smell that comes along with the die off. And it's, it's horrid. But that happens. It's, it's going to happen. Okay, so that's what happens with the die off. It's going to be a smell. 
okay um but no i had absolutely no pain no pain um someone asked me when you're passing it where does it come through <laughs> i'm laughing because i just think that's kind of funny so you know where babies come from you know where your period comes from that's where it's coming from that's where it's coming from okay that's where it passes from um because it's it, you they're typically in or around your uterine your uterus so it's going to pass through your vagina and it's going to come out there like baby yep so um What's another question that was, I probably should have just wrote all these questions down or printed them out or something, but I didn't. Um, I like to count on my, my memory. It's gonna work, kick in and work for me and, and just bring it to me. The more I rattle, it might just come up for me, right? That's my thought anyway. Um, but yeah, so no pain. There is a smell. Um, if that, if the um, baking soda and aluminum free, I mean, if if the aluminum free baking soda and the um, the apple cider vinegar is too strong, then put more water in it and take it down that way. Um, if you have to put a little something, put a little food on your stomach if you feel that you need to. Um, not so heavy because you don't want that interaction from that to interact with the food. Or just drink down some water prior to having that um, if it's bothering your stomach. But it never bothered my stomach. And I was asked, did I, um, is it normal to have a breakout, to, to have a bleed because of it? That never happened to me. So if that happens to you, that just means it's too strong for you. More than that probably means it's too strong for you. So make it not so strong. Um, you can put a little bit of lime inside of that mix. Maybe about um, about um, like about a teaspoon, one two teaspoon, half a tablespoon inside of the mix um, as well. Um, now, after, after I started passing the fibers, oh, and one additional thing, don't concern yourself with how long it takes someone else um, to see results because my internal environment is something completely different than the next person. And the next person is different from the next person. So I can tell you that it only took me five months to start seeing a change, or I can tell you that it took less time than that. I could tell you that it took me maybe about a month and a half to see changes, to start um, seeing fibroids come out of me. But that's me. I've been doing, working on my body for a long time. Then my internal environment, my flora, my everything is something completely different. This is probably a, a new journey that you're going on. You have to change up all of that. You have to, and you have to be diligent with it. Okay. This is not, um, don't think of it as like you're at war with, with, with your fibroid. You're not. Don't think of it as a competition where you have to beat time on this because it doesn't exist. So you have to do this at your pace, set your mind in the right space so that you can heal. Don't focus on what Susan is doing over here because you don't know what Susan has actually gone through. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know everything that I went through unless I told you that I started this back in 2007, 2008 with changing up my diet, which changed up my internal environment 
to build up a natural flora to start to start healing myself. So, and the thing that that I learned um, also was learning about Dr. Sabi. Dr. Sabi um, understood all of this too, because changing, just telling someone that they have to change the diet. Okay, you, you need to eat this. That's not, um, that's not necessarily, that's not healing someone. There's, there's this energy. And if you ever listen to, to Dr. Sebi um, speak, just listen to any of his videos where just listen to him speak, you feel this, this sort of energy coming from him. And it's, it's, it's also this, this mental thing, um, this mental journey that he takes you on. See, so it's it's a mental conditioning, and then and because you're in his presence, it's also a physical um, conditioning because it's the food. So it's mental as well as the food. So you're hold on, let me see. My my um, I need to stop recording. Hold on, I need to clear this out. Okay, but you're um when you're in. When you're in his presence, there's such an energy that that he exudes and that you feel, and there's information that's being passed from him into you um, that you can't help but to change um, mentally as well as physically and spiritually because of this information, because he's letting you know that yes, you can heal from something and you are now knowing, not just believing it, you are now knowing that you can do this yourself. And so all this information, all these videos um, that's been left behind is, is something that's telling you that you can heal yourself. Don't just try to use the food, but the food is a big part. Just like setting your mind right is a big part in this. So you have to have your mind your body and your spirit in coherence just so that you can heal, get your food together so that you can heal. And so that's what I did. That's what I continue to do. Do I have a very strict diet? Do I completely stick to Dr. Savy's list? No, because I never completely stuck to Dr. Savy's list. That's not how I started off with all of this, but that's kind of where I am with it. Um, just not so um, rigid with my food choices, but I am rigid with my food choices, but I don't worry about any of it because as you know, worrying and stressing over anything, you can't heal when you're worrying and you're stressing over anything. Everything should be done um, freely, fluid, um, and without much of a thought. So... You actually have to sort of program yourself into all of this. Program the type of food into you to where when you go to the grocery store, you don't have to think about what you're going to get. You just automatically get that because you reprogram the way you think about eating and the food that you're going to be eating. So I go to the grocery stores. I automatically navigate to those healthier foods for myself um, and you can definitely get there you can definitely get there so I'm gonna stop talking now um, and again if you have any additional questions if there's something that I didn't answer in this I don't know what it could possibly be now um, but if there's something that I didn't answer in this video um, drop it in the comments as y'all usually do um, and make sure that you go through the comments because your question is probably already answered in the comments because y'all be having a lot of questions to ask in regards to this. And it's really not a good thing to continue to focus on fibroids. You don't want to be just like focusing on, on, on an illness or an ailment because it keeps it in your mind and that's energy that's going towards this disease of your body and that energy also feeds it 
So it's not only um, the estrogen of the food, it's the energy that you feed it up from the stress that goes into these ailments. So you have to free yourself from all of that. And you can definitely free yourself from this. Um, and my second cookbook, it is available. It's called Food of the Guides. It's a holistic health guide. And that is put together to help get you straight. So I'm gonna end this video now. And I wanna say thank you for taking the time to even click on the link to listen to me um, in regards to this. Hopefully this will be the last video that I will need to put out um, for this so that we can all move forward instead of continually looking back and staying stuck in one place because of a disease. Okay, so we're gonna move forward past all of this. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna say namaste, peace, and I am